Hi everyone, it's Eric again, and here is another way of doing a bouncing ball. And this way I am only going to be using the layer uh, transform tool. And we'll be using the Bezier curves to make the ball bounce uh, much more dynamic, much uh, realer feeling. So let's start just by looking at my little pre-animation sketch that I've made to work out how the ball's going to bounce. And so, of course, on um, frame one, the ball's going to be at its highest point of the entire bounce, where it starts from. It's going to go down and hit the ground at frame seven. So that's one, two, three, four, five frames before it hits the ground. And then it's going to bounce back up, down, up, down. And on the second bounce, it's one, two, three, four, and then at 12 is its highest, and then 1, 2, 3, 4 back down, and 17 at its lowest part there. Uh, it's good to keep those bounces very even up and down, but there's going to be one fewer frame in between the low and the high point for each bounce because it's not traveling as far. So from 17, 1, 2, 3, up to 21, and then 1, 2, 3, and then 25. So all nice even spacing between the up and down but one fewer frame for each successive bounce so let's uh, zoom out and get started so i'm just going to go to my empty vector layer that's always there when you start a new animation i'm going to get my draw shape tool i'm going to make sure i have the oval selected I'm going to hold down the shift, which makes sure that it stays perfectly round. And I'm just going to draw a ball, about that big. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the Set Origin tool. And I'm going to click right here on the very bottom of that ball on that red line. And what that does is when I move that ball, and squash or rotate or anything, it rotates on that origin point. It squashes on that origin point. Get rid of all that. If the origin were, say, in the middle of the ball, I come down, I'm going to pretend that bottom red line you can see there is the floor, just so I have something to aim for. Now when I squash and stretch, see it's pulling up as well. So that's why it's important to set the origin right where the ball's going to be hitting the ground. Also, to get those two red lines, you go to View, and you can turn on Video Safe Zones. We won't worry about what those are all about, but we're going to use the outer red line as our fake floor, just so we have something to aim for. Okay, so on frame one, I am just going to um, set a keyframe for its position. And one of the easiest ways to do that, you could just click it, there, keyframe set. Or you can always set a keyframe for position. You know, I've got the layer, transform layer tool selected. I can just come up and you see all kinds of settings for it. There's a position setting, a scale setting, and an angle setting for this. And all I have to do is I can just click Reset, even though it doesn't change anything. See, it created a um, keyframe. So we've just set a keyframe for where it starts. And we'll go, following my guide, to frame 7, where it hits. So I'll just drag it down. That's pretty good. And if you're not seeing that blue line come up into that top bar again, almost all the way to the right, there's a show path box. You can check that on to see that line. It helps to see it. Uh, the next high point is 12. So I'll just go out to 12 and I'll bring it up about half of the way it fell. And then I'm going to go to frame 17 and we're gonna hit the ground again. And then I'm gonna go to 21. See why it's so useful to have this uh, planning? Again, about halfway up, and then 25 on the ground again. And we're 
we're just going to have it stop there. Uh, I'll leave it to you later if you want to um, have it roll off the screen. Uh, that'll be a little challenge for you when this is done. So let's take a look at how that's bouncing. Eh. It's bouncing, but it doesn't feel very good. It, it has no character. And also, I haven't put the squashes in yet, but I'm going to make sure this bounce is really good before I go and add any more detail. Okay, this is the part where we switch to Bezier curves. So I'm just going to select all these keyframes. I'm going to right click on one. And I'm going to go into the drop down menu. And you can't see it, so let me bring this up. Now with them all selected, I'm going to click that, get the drop down, and right there about the middle of the choices, I'm going to switch it to Bezier, and you'll notice all the keyframes now have a little dot in the middle of them. And I'm going to go to the motion graph, and see that's already selected. If it's not, just double click on this uh, icon on the side that uh, represents the layer translation. Double click, there it is. Okay, there's three different lines here. Red is the x-axis, left to right. Blue is the z-axis, closer or further from the camera. And green is the y-axis, up and down. And you'll notice the green is the one that looks most like the bounce in the drawing. Uh, now the ball's going to be going forward at a pretty steady pace. So that red line should be pretty straight between the first and the last frame. Uh, any curves on the line are going to either speed it up or slow it down. And I'll just very carefully grab that handle on that first red line and notice what happens to the path as I drag it back and forth. You know, it'll make the ball suddenly go backwards even, or forward faster. And the farther apart these points on the line are, the faster the ball will appear to be moving. And what we want is pretty even. So I'm just going to make sure that this is pretty straight. Again, nothing in nature is perfect. We're just going to use kind of a guide straight line. I'm not going to get out a ruler or anything and measure this out, but we want it looking pretty straight. Okay. Now here's the uh, trickier bit, or not so tricky. We're going to ignore the blue line, and I am going to go, and let's look at the Y. And what I can do, actually, I can use my click, right click on my mouse and drag up. That'll get it more centered. And I can use my mouse wheel to make it larger or smaller. And if I just do that and it's like, oh, completely gone, I can just come and click Auto Zoom. Puts me back where I was. And so I can just very gently, it can be a little overly sensitive, zoom so we can see that line better. Now the ball isn't going to slow as it reaches the ground, as it approaches the ground, because the ball doesn't know the ground's coming. So, but it is going to be slow coming out of the highest point. As it comes up, gravity gets it. And it starts slowing as it reaches the top, because gravity has it now. And then it'll slowly start to drop, but speed as it goes to the ground. So the first thing I'm going to do is the smoother these curves are on the green line, the slower things are going to appear to be moving. And the more pointed they are from coming in and out of the keyframe, the faster they appear to be going. So I'm just going to start with one where you can see both sides. I'm going to just bring these up to smooth them. Now if you get this where it's going in a seesaw, you can hold down your control, whoops. You can hold down your Option or Alt key, depending on a Mac or PC. And uh, just grab one side or the other and you notice that breaks it. And that might be more important, I think on the uh, spots where it hits than the spots where it's at its high point. And I'm just going to kind of uh, give those all a nice hill coming off of it. So let's take a look. 
See, it's already a bit better. See, it's speeding into the ground and then bouncing up. But it could be even better. So I'm going to actually sharpen the ball strike at the lower paths here, the lower keyframes. And I'll just bring that up a little bit. Way better. OK, so let's throw in the squash. So we'll just start there. The ball should be perfectly round there. And we'll come out to frame 7. And that's where it squashes down. So I'll just make the uh, animation area bigger again so you can see better. When I put my mouse over the top center of the, uh, of the layer selection, the transform layer box that shows up around the uh, ball. I get a little double pointed arrow coming off of it. That means I can click and drag up or down, up or down. And again, if you watch the set origin, it is uh, sticking to the ground, which is why we set it that way. So I'm going to bring that down to squash it. But you'll notice the ball gets smaller as it squashes because it's squashing down but the sides aren't squashing out like they would. So let's take a look up again. We could just, you know, eyeball it. That's one way of doing it. But if you're not comfortable that you've got it right, uh, Moho's there to help you. Let's take a look. I'm on frame 7 where the squash happens. So I'm gonna come up into the top bar again and see scale. And you can see the X scale is bigger because I dragged it out, and the Y scale is smaller because I dragged it down. Uh, normally, they're at 1 and 1. I'll show you when I hit reset, and there they are back at 1, 1, and 1. So again, I'll just grab from the top, drag down. Now you see that the Y, I've done it down to about 72. So X can go out about the same amount that Y went down. So that's about, it came down about 17 or 18 from 1 to 0.72 is 18. So I'm just going to add a 0.18 to the X. And there we go. Nice. And it's not squashing before it hits the ground in this animation. So let's just come up one frame. Let's go to the frame right before the land. And I'm just going to click the reset button for scale. Ta-da. So it stays round, hits, and squashes. Now it comes back up. It's going to stay squashed all the way because I haven't changed anything. So I'm going to just say it's going to unsquash slowly and be at it back to normal on frame 12 when it hits the top. So I'll just go to 12 and I'm going to hit reset. See? So that feels more real because it squashes and then slowly returns back to normal size. We'll come back out to frame 17 where it hits again. I'm going to squash this down again, but not as much because it's not falling from as far. So, you know, that's showing it about 88, which is uh, 12 lower than 0.12 lower than one. So I'm going to add that 0.12 onto the X again. There. Come back out to frame 21 at the high point, and I'm going to hit reset. And then for this last one, it's not falling very far at all. So let's just bring it down a teeny tiny bit. That's 0.93 approximately. So I'm going to add the 0.7 difference, 0.07 difference to the land. And then I'll just come out a few just for fun and hit reset so that it squashes and then reforms. Again, you might want to have that ball roll off or something and I'll leave that to you. Let's watch. And that is a much better bounce. I don't like that pop up again at the end. I'm going to move that out several more frames so that it's a slower reform. That looks awful. So I'm just going to take that off. And I'll leave it to you to try this on your own.
and uh, do whatever you want to have it end. Thanks. <laughs>